Hello and welcome to another session of my Data Preparation for Data Science webinar. My name is Gerhard and I'm a data scientist and book author at SAS. In our session today, we are focusing on data quality of analytics. And I'm going to show you how you can detect and treat missing values in your longitudinal data. Let's have a look on two graphs and I would ask you to decide whether they are most likely being built on the same data or not. If you observe the axes, both the horizontal and the vertical axis are built in the identical way in both graphs. But still, the two graphs look very different if you take a look at them. So in order to decide whether they are on this, have been built on the same data or not, visually we would most likely say no. However, if we take a look on more detail, we see that the right graphs goes, has a, a value inserted for every week on the horizontal axis, whereas the left graph only has values for certain data points, for this one, for this one, here, here, and here. So it looks like in the left graph, the missing time values have been in interpolated, whereas on the right graph, the missing or the non-existing time intervals have been set to zero. So the base data for both graphs are the same. For the red graph, we see the original data which was created as we see it here. There were only values available for the first, for the third, seventh, eighth, and eleventh week. And as we mentioned earlier, the other time values in the line graph were just in interpolated. The blue graph looks different because we have inserted records for the missing time points and have inserted the value zero for that. If no transaction, if no behavior was measured in a certain time point. This is the reason why based on the same data, the two graphs look highly different. If we now ask ourselves, which is the correct representation of the data, we have to say it depends. It depends on the nature of the variable which is represented here. For example, if the outside temperature is, should be uh, shown here, the left one with the red line makes sense because those time points where we did not have values were visually in interpolated uh, by, the, by the line. And this makes sense to assume that between week one and week three, week number two might have been here something in the middle or something similar. If however the data was precipitation and we should measure the uh, in, 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 in millimeters the, the amount of rain which, which has been falling, it does not make sense to interpolate here between one week and one three and, and week three because if there's not the record which has uh, which represents the data, we might assume that there was no rain at all. And uh, as no rain recording has taken place, no record was output to the data, and therefore we have to insert the, the record and insert and impute the value zero here. So you see it depends what you should do or, or, or what makes most sense depending on the nature of the variables and the business context. Let's now have a look how such situations might occur. For that, we need to differentiate between transactional data and time series data. For example, on the left-hand side, the transactional data, you can consider this as a table where every event that occurred is captured. For example, when the customer visits a website, a record is inserted into the table, or when it rains on a certain day, uh, a record how much it rained is inserted into the data. If we now go and accumulate this data on the time axis, we will receive for those time points where nothing happened, no website uh, uh, usage, no rain, 
we will most likely not receive a record in the output data set. So for example, what you see, what you see here on the right hand side between uh, four and six, the record of five o'clock is missing because most likely there was no website usage at that time. This means that just accumulating transactional data might mean uh, might lead to the case of missing records in your time series data because nothing happened there. It is therefore important to differentiate between the explicit and the implicit missing value in longitudinal data or more precisely to differentiate between missing records and missing values. If you take a look at the data that you see here, it's quite obvious that here a value is missing. It is a missing value. The record exists, but there's no value. However, if we observe this data in also in more detail, we see that there are other values missing. So for example, here between September and December in 2005, we're missing two, two months and two records are missing here and some other records below as well. This means in the first one, the, the record is existing, but the value is missing. In the other ones, the record is missing and there is no continuity in, in the time series. So if we would now analyze this data in time series analysis, we might have a problem because uh, the procedure doesn't find the uh, records aligned at the, uh, at the time axis as desired. And also the decision, the implicit or explicit decision, whether this should be a missing value, an average value or a zero value has not been done. And you should do this in order to receive proper results. At sascommunities.com, I have recently published two articles on that topic. On the first one, I, I show methods with SAS, especially with SAS proc time series, to check and to assure the continuity of your time series data, to insert the missing records. In another article, I show methods where how you can use proc time series and proc expand to replace and to impute the missing values with different methods. Let's have a quick look on how this could look like in SAS code. Let's take a look at some example data. You see here some records from the SAS help air dataset, and I have deleted some records out of the dataset. For example, here between records six and seven, you see there's no record for July 49 available. If I now run the time series procedure in SAS by using this data and creating a new output data set where I say the time ID is inserted, I can use the ID statement to say in variable date, there's the time axis, and please observe that is on an interval, on a monthly schedule, all records should be there. If it is not, insert this record and set the missing value for that. If I run this, you see that I get now inserted the record for July 49 plus a value of zero inserted here. This means that I can use the proc time series to insert missing records in your time series data. And please observe that there might be more complicated scenarios. If you have by groups, by region, by product, or you have data which are not yet accumulated, then proc time series can do this all automatically for you, which you would have otherwise to program in, with a lot of code manually in your SAS program or with any other software. Let's observe another example where I again use the air data. However, here I have set some values to missing. So you see, for example, for May, July and other months, I have randomly set some of these values to missing. I can now use again the proc time series procedure to, set, to impute these, these uh, missing values with certain values. So for example, I can use proc time series to, to set the missing values to zero as I did previously, or to insert the previous value from the last available time period, or I can set the overall mean which I have 
for this spy group in all in uh, uh, as the average of all observations. So you see this is a sample of possibilities which prop time series allows you to do. Let's have a look at the results of such an analysis. Proc time series allows you to insert missing records if they do not fulfill the continuity of your uh, time series intervals. It also allows you to insert value, uh, uh, variables, for example, by imputing with zero, with the last known value, where the last value is just carried forward into the uh, missing cell, or you can also replace them with the average of the entire time series. If you use PROC expand, for example, you can also perform interpolations that, which are based on splines in order to insert missing to, to, to insert imputation values, which are very good in terms of, uh, uh, of, of fulfilling the shape and the, the, the curve of the expected uh, course over time of the series. So you see that there's a very powerful set of procedures available, which allow you to prepare your data for time series analysis before you run your uh, ARIMA models, exponential smoothing models, or other time series analysis. In this webinar, we have seen that missing values in time series is something where you should go into more detail. You should check whether is this a missing value or a missing record that I'm looking for and how can I should I handle them? And if I decide to impute, what is an appropriate imputation value? Is it just an interpolated value like we had with the temperature or is it a zero value which we had for example for the website visits? If nothing happened in that period, then we should impute zero. We also see in future webinars uh, important ideas how you can visualize the completeness structure of your time series data and a special important point for this data quality for analytics series here is to encourage the analytic awareness of data preparation data quality already early before you start with the analysis. And this is what I summarized in my book, Data Quality for Analytics. Thanks a lot for joining. It has been a pleasure to have you as a guest in my webinar. There are more sessions available on data preparation for data science, where I also talk about how to assemble your data or how to perform feature generation for your analytical models. And I always put this in context, how this all relates together. So for example, the data preparation um, task with the data quality task together with the analytic tasks, when you, uh, for example, apply data science methods on, on your data, and this has also been the focus of my free SAS Pressbooks. That's more available from me on Medium and LinkedIn, YouTube, the webinars, tips and tricks on uh, SAS community articles, and all the code is available in GitHub. Thanks a lot for listening. Goodbye.